Well, hey there. How you doing? That's a nice looking shirt you got. After some reflection, I realized I may have been remiss in my last video. The touch probe video. I should have taken the opportunity to talk about how I'm handling the probe offset. As I mentioned, and as you can see, the probe is not in my spindle. If I zero at the probe, what's that do for me all the way over here at the tool? Well, let's talk about that. Caveat, I don't 100% know what I'm doing, but what I'm doing seems to work for me. I assume there are smarter ways to do this, but I'm using work offsets to do this. Now, I didn't invent work offsets. I found that out the hard way this morning when my patent was rejected. What's a work offset, I hear you ask? Excellent question. Before we get into that, just to make sure everyone can play along with us, let's quickly review some of the basics. This is my CNC router. My router uses stepper motors to turn screws to move the cutting tool. CNC machines, especially homebrew versions like this one, are dumb as a brick. On their own, they're not much good at anything other than, maybe, holding your coffee. You see, there's a chain of command with CNC machines. Usually, I tell the computer what to do, and the computer tells the router what to do. Well, at least for now, anyway, until the robot rebellion of 2020. I covered that chain of command in my CNC basics video, so I won't get back into those details here. But to set the stage for today, as an example of just how dumb these things are, when I turn on my router, it doesn't even know where it is. It's as if it's coming into existence for the very first time, every time. Here, watch this. Router. Make me a nice key rack shaped like a guy in waders pulling a largemouth bass out of a lake. See what I mean? It can't do anything because it doesn't know where it is. It doesn't know where the cutting tool is. It doesn't know where the table is. It doesn't know where my work blank is. It doesn't know if it has a work envelope of a mile in every direction or only a couple of feet. Okay, technically, even if it knew all that stuff, it still wouldn't do anything because it doesn't have G code and it isn't voice activated. The very first thing I need to do when the router's turned on every time is to home the machine. Reference all the axes. I need to tell the machine to go out and find the edge of the yard it's allowed to play in. The router will send one axis at a time off into the great unknown, looking for a limit switch to tell it when to stop. The other end of the yard is defined in the software. I told it how big it was way back when I first birthed this thing. But it also has switches on the other end in case it tries to make a run for it. Alright, the machine has hit all three limit switches and established where it is in space. It knows its place in life. It has defined a box to work in with X, Y, and Z dimensions, and it's waiting in the corner. Now if the computer tells the router to go one foot in every direction, it'll move X one foot, Y one foot, and Z one foot, ending up somewhere about there. Spectacular. Now it needs to know where the wood is, where the work is. Hey, I told you these things are dense. We could put the work here, in a vise, in the corner it's already waiting in. That technically might work, but it isn't very convenient. First, it doesn't have any room to go left or back in this case. It can't really get around the work to do its job. Second, I went to a heck of a lot of trouble to build most of the router way over there. I guess I should have built it more over here. This isn't the first time I'm working with this machine, so I've already got a vise located in a convenient location, in about the center of the table. That's where I'd like to do the work. I'm going to use the arrow keys on the keyboard to jog the machine, bringing the spindle to the location where I'd like to start the job. Once I find the position I like, usually with perhaps an edge finder, I can locally zero out the machine using the aptly named buttons 0x, 0y, and 0z. Now this point right here is 000, the new local origin. Any further instructions given to the router will all start from here. If I go one foot in each direction now, I'll end up somewhere completely different than where the same instructions sent it to the first time. What we just did when we zeroed out the machine at the new location is create an offset, or define an offset. We've offset it from its native or machine coordinates. And in fact, we can switch back and forth between the two. Machine coordinates, work coordinates. Machine coordinates are showing where the spindle is relative to the limit switches it homed against, relative to that corner it found when it went off into the sunset and back again. And the local coordinates are the current work offset we've asked the machine to work in. This local system has a special name. It's called G54. Yeah, I know, funny name. And if we go over to the offsets page, we can see we're in G54. Now, I don't know how many offsets you can make, but Mach, I believe, can handle 255 user-defined offsets. You might be able to get into more, but you can see there are six easily accessible offsets right here on the offsets page. But personally, I don't think I've ever used more than, I don't know, three. Now, if I move the tool around, 
and then tell the machine to go back to zero using the button that says go to work zero, it'll go to the work zero we just defined in G54 and not the machine coordinates zero way over yonder. When we tell it to get to work, it'll start here and make our part here at G54. Think of offsets like map pins. You know, like you'd drop a pin on an internet map. Walking one block west takes you different places depending on which pin you're starting from. See what I just did there? Connecting with the younger generation? I'm hip to their jive talk. Allow me to demonstrate this by example. Let's say I've got four vices. And maybe I want to make four of the same part, or four different parts, or whatever. It's not important. Hey, I'm the one here with the four vices. You're not the boss. Let's also just make pretend they're all bolted down. I'll take the router for a stroll, jogging each axis to get to what I want to call the zero point for each vice. When I get there, I'm going to go into a new offset, say G55 in this case, and zero out the DROs. Let's do the same thing for the next vice. G56 and zero the DROs there. And then again G57, zeroing out each time I zero the spindle. Again, maybe with an edge finder. Now that I have the four vice locations defined in their own offsets, I can quickly and easily get back to any of those reference frames. If I select G54 and hit go to work zero, it'll go back to the big vice with the wood on it in this case. If I select G55 and then press go to work zero, it'll go to the G55 origin. Same of course for G56 and G57. To recap, here's what we've mapped out. Four work offsets. These are stored in an offset table in mock and if you always home your machine on startup, you can get to any of those positions without having to edge find and zero again. And once you have them set up, you could run multiple parts by simply calling the offsets before the G-code. For example, sample code might look something like this. What up G? That's how I like to start all my G-code. G54, make part A. G55, make part A. G56, make part B. G57, make part C. So now if we loaded material into all of the vices and maybe had an automatic tool changer, we could walk away and the machine would make four parts two copies of part A, one of part B, and one of part C. So in G-code, there's a lot of ways to do offsets like this. We've only talked about work or fixture offsets. If you had a fixture plate with, say, 50 parts in it, you probably wouldn't want to set up 50 offsets, though you certainly could. There are ways to simply offset your G-code a fixed amount, based on your fixture plate, of course, to achieve the same end with a lot less hassle. But again, it's your machine. You're likely not in a production environment, so you know, you do you. Getting back to my touch probe, which was the whole reason for making this video, I have the probe defined in G55, and G54 has an offset from G55. If I move from G55 to G54 and send the machine to its origin, the machine will move to the new G54 origin, which just coincidentally happens to be X and Y0 for my spindle. So this is really only temporary to test out my touch probe. There are probably quite a few ways to handle this, maybe with tool offsets or something, but I think I'm going to make a custom button in Mach 4 that simply moves the machine a fixed amount in G54 and zeroes X and Y. That way I'm always in the same coordinate system the machine starts up in. So that's it. I went a long time screwing around with CNC without ever bothering with offsets, but hopefully this makes them a bit less intimidating if you've never used them before, and perhaps shows you just how useful they can be. Have fun. Be safe. Thanks for watching. Hold on a minute. As much as I hate to muddy the waters, I don't want to make the same mistake twice of not seeing something all the way through. This video, in a roundabout way, was meant to be about work offsets. But let me show you how I've implemented the touch probe with a custom button. Let's take a quick look at Mach 4. Mach 4 has a built-in screen editor. Now, I'm not the programming type, so take this with a grain of salt. But I find it relatively easy to get around and make changes, you know, within my pay grade. Essentially, what I did was steal a button from one screen and copy-paste it into another. I changed the label text and the G-code behind the button, of course, to simply move my spindle a fixed amount in X and Y, and then zero the DROs. Now, on the probing screen, I can edge find, in this case an outside corner, and the machine will do its thing. When it's done, I can push my new zero spindle button, 
and it'll run two lines of G-code to center and zero the spindle. It's now ready to go. I can load a tool, 0Z, and get to work without having to change work offsets. Nothing major, just saves me a few steps and, maybe more importantly, perhaps helps me make fewer dumb mistakes than I already make. Okay, that is all. End transmission.